द कंसेप्ट ऑफ इंडेक्स नंबर्स सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल सी द इंडेक्स नंबर्स एंड हाउ दीज इंडेक्स नंबर्स आर इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर एस सो हेयर this bracket plus i plus uh, comma plus j and plus this is closed and after that i am just changing the line and here you just see that suppose the size is 5 by 5 now you can see that the index numbers are on the screen what is the meaning of this the meaning of this is fifth row and fourth column the meaning of this is fifth row and fifth column the meaning of this first row fifth column first row third column third row third column this is what you have to do so today few more question we will be doing <coughs> but before that you must know index numbers so children here the very first row is this one the last row is this one the last column is this one first column is this one i hope you all know this okay now suppose the question is based on the diagonals and children here this is the primary diagonal which is the left diagonal and you can see that everywhere the row index number and the column index number is same so what is row index number here the row index number is this one and column index number is this one so everywhere you can see that the row index number and the column index number is same and it is your primary diagonal and uh, what we can say that it is the left diagonal as well okay now next is to see that right diagonal okay this is the right diagonal this is the right diagonal and uh, if you just uh, look through uh, look into this uh, index numbers pattern you can uh, you will realize that the sum of the row index and the column index is one less than the size of the matrix the size of the matrix is 5 by 5 when it is a square matrix remember whenever the question is based on diagonals the matrix must be square matrix so here it is a square matrix and the sum of these row and column index number in the right diagonal is always one less than the size of the matrix so it is that's why it is four here okay now uh, anyone please help me in writing the code i would like to simply calculate the sum of the left and right diagonal separately yes so i'm just going to remove this part because you all know now how what are the what is the significance of the index numbers here and children here you need to write obj dot next int and suppose i want to fill the matrix with the values from 0 to 49 that's why i have given here 50 and there is no need to change this okay now anyone please what will be the code for that the code for uh, calculating the sum of the left and right diagonal separately please tell mehul singh would you please help me okay okay so here children i have taken uh, this variable left for the left diagonal and this variable right for the right diagonal and here what i need to do is just uh, to check if i and j matches 
then left is equals to left plus a of ij this is what i have to do and uh, if uh, if i plus j matches any either row or column minus 1 then it is right is equals to right plus a of ij this is what i have to do okay yes beta yes yes there is there is there is another method we can uh, i will show you that so here left sum is left and here the sum of the right is that right ah yes i of i because uh, the sum uh, the row and column is same so no need to write we can write this also or we can write i j also because both are same okay if i have written then it's okay okay now see suppose the sum the matrix is 5 by 5 you can check the sum this is the left diagonal just add these and this is the right diagonal just check this the sum of the left diagonal is 90 and the sum of the right diagonal is 120 if you have any doubt then please tell any doubt class 11 class 11 okay now uh, children uh, one thing uh, i am just putting this uh, these two statements yes good morning good morning sir okay children one thing uh, i i'm just i want to put uh, these statements in multi line comments and there is another method in which i need not to write uh, that uh, uh, i need not to specify the loop like this i know uh, we don't need this uh, multiple uh, nested loop and uh, one more thing and how it is possible children if you uh, see that uh, right diagonal index number if the size is 5 by 5 the values will go like this it is 0 4 uh, it is 0 4 and then 1 3 and then 2 2 and then 3 1 and then 4 0 this is what the index number will go like this so if we can get this sequence it will be easier for us to calculate the sum and with the help of single loop also it is possible so that is uh, the loop will go from zero to less than row only this much is enough this much is enough and uh, it is for sure that the matrix is a square matrix so what we need to do is left is equals to left plus a of i i this is this we can do for the left diagonal because we know that it is a square matrix and the row index and column index is same so we need not to check if i am specifying i i and there also i need not to check so since it was a nested loop that's why we need to check and here now what to do for, for the right one for the right diagonal what we need to do is right is equals to right plus a of i and here what we need to write is column minus i minus 1 this will come like this and we need not to just have that nested loop j within that i am just telling you how it is possible so children suppose the size is 5 by 5 so it is for sure that this loop will go from 0 to 4 um it if it is going from 0 to 4 so initially what will happen and the the first element from the top towards right i'm just talking about that diagonal right diagonal the index number for the row and column is 0 comma 4 and then 1 comma 3 so first of all it is 5 minus 0 minus 1 it is 4 it is coming 0 comma 4 next time when the value of i becomes 1 it becomes 5 minus 1 minus that one it is one comma three it is coming and then it is coming two comma two and after that it is coming like three comma one and then finally it comes as four comma zero so we need not to have this 
nested loop there as we know that the it is a square matrix so if uh, you people have any doubt then please tell okay children so here uh, the matrix is 5 by 5 and this is the matrix and here uh, we just calculate the sum of the left diagonal elements and just try to calculate the sum of right diagonal elements if you don't have any problem then please tell and if you have any problem then tell me i will explain it one more time okay now uh, so i hope uh, the indexing is very much clear uh, and now i am going to give you one question and you all have to solve that so children what you have to do uh, write a program to calculate the sum of the border and non border elements of a matrix separately so please try that and post your code in the chat box only the main function hurry up all of you please try the diagonal and non diagonal elements separately please try that Bayang Singh, but hurry up and send the code. Yes, Udhav Agarwal. Okay. Ah, uh, but ah, what you have done, Udhav? ओके सौम्या अग्रवाल बेटा ट्राइंग स्पर्श शुक्ला सेंड द कोड बेटा हरी अप कौस्तुभ अग्रवाल डन ओके सो नेक्स्ट टाइम बेटा राइट ऑन पेपर एंड क्लिक द पिक एंड यू कैन पोस्ट एंड यू कैन व्हाट्सएप मी पर्सनली लवण्या बेटा सुष्मिता जैन बेटा सेंड द कोड
हर्षोहान बेटा सेंड द कोड नीले गुड मॉर्निंग सेंड द कोड yes uh, no no it is not a square matrix it can be of any size but right now uh, you can consider that it is a square matrix but the code will be same for the square matrix and non square matrix okay udbhav your code is okay sajal chandra ah beta you have checked only for row sajal you have not checked for the column uh there will be so you have to consider that also na some of border elements na aditya singh send the code ऋत्वेज वर्मा यस यस आस्क आफ्टर द क्लास यस माय यू नो ऑन माय पर्सनल नंबर mayank singh okay the code is okay ah oh, that is okay okay children one thing uh, i request to all of you that if you are practicing on laptop or desktop and uh, if your pc is having good configuration then please install intellij idea community version and if you have any problem in installing that so please tell me so smitha your code is okay the conditions are okay rest of the lines uh, are not coming the question is to calculate the sum of the border elements and non border elements separately so smita your code will work just uh, add uh, the lines where you have to calculate the sum right somya agarwal uh, beta somya only one loop is coming one line send it again
yes it's it it's correct sushmita lavanya beta send the code okay 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 then then it's okay nila yes on my personal number vedant it's okay okay now children most of you are writing the correct logic uh, but few things i would like to tell you <clears throat> uh, please uh, concentrate on the screen uh, children suppose uh, i have made this function and in the that in that function i would like to calculate the sum uh, some border elements and this is the matrix uh so here i have taken uh, this is for border elements and this is for non border elements and here what i have done you simply start a loop that will go up to length and this is the loop that will go for a0 dot length j++ and you all know that this condition is for border a dot length minus 1 or j is equals to a0 dot length minus 1 children this is the condition for border what will be the condition for non border elements children anybody please tell what will be the condition for non border elements nilay please tell yes uh, in front of this expression just put a mark of exclamation and then here it becomes bn is equals to bn plus a of ij and then what to do is else b is equals to b plus a of ij and here i would like to print that so border sum is that b and non border sum is that bn so i think that there is no confusion the name of the function is uh, this uh, sum border and uh, all of you please be muted please mute yourself uh, now i would like to just call this function here so obj dot this function and passing this a is it is obj1 okay now just uh, run this code the size of the matrix is 5 by 5 you can see that the sum of the border is suppose the size of the matrix is not 5 by 5 the size is 4 by 4 now you can see that the sum of the border and non border if you check uh, this these are the non border elements so you can easily check 30 plus 18 plus 17 plus 21 okay now one question kostu bagarwal child i don't want i don't want to print the border and non border elements here i want to print the border and non border elements right here what should i do what is needed the return yes
that will not help because it is the main method and ultimately then you need to make it static just provide me another solution of that i want to return these two values from this function the return type of the function is at present void and i want to change it yes return type will become array so what to write the values are integer no doubt but it is not enough what to write here we need to put square brackets here square brackets and some we have already calculated in terms of b and bn so i need to return so return what to return yes what will be the statement here sushmit sushmitha but please tell yahan par statement kya hoga return in place of this one please tell spar shukla kastav agarwal no it will not work the array even you have not defined there are two ways there are two methods wait there are two methods first is arr new int size 2 and arr 0 will be b and arr 1 will be dot bn this is what you have to write and after that you need to return arr and here what is needed is this variable will receive the value written by this function and in place of b will be arr of 0 and in place of bn will be arr of 1 this time i am just going to execute this so children suppose the size is 3 by 3 non border sum is 27 it is coming which is not correct and border sum is 121 we have to check that where the code is we will where ha ah, yes that's why it is minus 1 that's why okay uh so now the change is uh, so uh, just run this it is uh, 3 by 3 and you can see that the sum of non modular element is 6 because everything comes within everything this is actually the border this all and this is non border that's why the sum is 6 okay it's it is working children here in this i have made a permanent array permanent object this is i don't want to create this and i don't want to write these is two statements also what should i do mehul singh please tell rest of the code will not change and here we need to change this only mehul last year i taught you this do you remember that mehul singh sajal chandra anshul kumar kastub no uh, it's not correct anshul because uh, you are trying you the question is i don't want to make that permanent instance of the array that uh, actually the statement this one if you write this one this is actually a permanent instance and every time when you call this function one fresh copy of array will be created and necessarily it will occupy memory and so i don't want to use this permanent instance i want to use temporary instance So what is the logic here? I will be returning only the array only. Uh, array only. Lavanya, do you have any solution of this? 
लवण्या आर यू देअर येस हा असं जल येस बेटा यू हॅव टू राईट वेट यू हॅव टू राईट न्यू इंट स्क्वेअर ब्रॅकेट अँड देन यू नीड टू राईट बी कॉमा बी एन दिस इज द वे यू कॅन क्रिएट a temporary instance of the array actually you cannot fill the array without initializing it so where is the initialization initialization is this one any number of parameters you can pass that's why you are not passing any you are not specifying any value right here this is empty just because you can include infinite number of parameters here that's why and b comma bn these are the values where b you are storing at zero index number and b and v you are storing at index number 1 and when this value is returned that will get stored in this variable arr and that arr zero means the border element sum and arr one means non border element sum so if you have any doubt children please tell yes definitely this is how you can receive the values and uh, this is how you are calculating and returning the values and this time the function is returning array which is actually more than one values of the same type Any doubt, please tell. Definitely, I will be. I will post. And one question, uh, I will give you people for assignment. And uh, you all have to submit this assignment today before 9 p.m. And those uh, will. Uh, those. if suppose somebody's assignment did not reach uh then definitely in next class you will be penalized i will mark you absent in the next class so please mail it to me before 9 pm so i'm just going to tell you the question children here suppose you have a matrix of any size any order and the elements are these these are the elements now your task is to swap the first row of the matrix with the last so after swapping the resultant matrix will be the first row becomes this and you need to swap the second with the second last so here it is this is the second row in the resultant one and this is the third row and this is the last row you are not transposing the array you are swapping the rows of the matrix the first row will be swapped with the last row the second row will be swapped with the second last the third row will be swapped with the third last and if the matrix size is odd length size then in that case the center row will not change suppose it is having five rows then only top two and bottom two rows will be swapped the row at the center will not change any query any doubt then please tell yes okay so now i am just uh, providing you the link for the attendance so middle you cannot change na because uh, 
swapping of the middle is not possible. Suppose I'm adding one more row here. This is suppose the middle row. So the first will uh, swapped with the last, second will swapped with the second last. But for this, there is no an, uh, another row with whom uh, you are going to swap this. It will not change. Ye to wahi raegi na? Ye as it is raegi maa pe. And in that case, in that case, the output of this will become, uh, I'm just telling you what is the output in this case. The output will remain like this. Because the first and last, you have swapped the second and second last you have swapped, but the row at the center is there only. So this is the question and you all have to attempt this today. Okay, so now I'm providing you the link of the Google form in the chat box. So please mark your attendance here. And if you have any doubt, any query, then please ask. And next time, children, you have to join at 9 a.m. sharp because uh, I will be providing the link for the attendance at 9. And I will give only 5 to 7 minutes for marking your attendance. And after that, I will not provide you the Google form link. And those who have filled the attendance, they can leave the session and if you have any doubt, you can stay. If you want to ask any query. And one more thing, children, please install IntelliJ IDEA in your PC. Because at present, it is the best IDE for Java platform. And even you can execute other programming languages also, like uh, you can execute Python here, you can uh, use it for app development, uh, so for Android, Kotlin is there, so it supports Kotlin. Even uh, Android Studio also you can install with this. So this is an uh, excellent IDE. So if you have any doubt in installing that, you just, you can take my help. And if uh, more than five or six children are there, so I will, I will give you a live demo of that, how to download and install that. And whenever any assignment questions you are getting, so please try to manage some time and execute it on PC. Because it, yes, beta. Okay. Uh, it is not possible in uh, Java. You need to return the values if you want to print the values in the main method. There is one method you can declare instance variable or you can, uh, yes, uh, wait, wait, I'm just showing you. Nile, I'm just sharing my screen. I will, I'm just uh, showing you how to do that. Chilan, just wait. <coughs> Children, here in that case, uh, you need to declare two variables here. One is B and another is BN. And you have to make these two variables static. And what you need to do, then uh, you need not to receive the values like this. And here, it is not needed. And in that case, this must be void because the function is not going to return anything and you need not to write this statement. And in the main method here what to do is border sum is b and non border sum is that b1 bn not b1 this is bn so children this will also work and i will tell you why you have taken a static variable here 
3 by 3 matrix and you can see that uh, the sum is wait here it is a static okay so 0 must be it comes here it is 3 by 3 sum is not there okay uh, why it is not working yes children actually I have declared these two variables here also so if uh, some variables I have declared and I have made a static just after the class declaration and another set of variables with the same name if I am declaring within any other function so within that function body only local variables will be considered so it is not uh, using those static variables now when I have removed these now it will use that and this time the sum will come you can see that the sum is 39 it is coming children earlier uh, what was the problem the problem was that here two uh, local variables uh, I had defined earlier that's why it was using these local variables here and initial value of these static variable in that case remains zero that's why the sum was zero and zero was being printed on the screen yes and yes how many what pardon main method is receiving uh, here in this case in the pre like 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 you do with call by value we you were returning array type and that array was directly receiving by that statement and it is the same procedure with the call by value there is no difference the same procedure is with the, that call by value there is no difference in a similar way you can return reference objects also reference data type and here one more thing you can do you just create a class and hundreds of object you can place within that class and you can just return a simple object of that class so all those different hundreds hundreds of objects will go like that what is uh, the uh, what is actually what is the significance of the return statement the significance of the return statement is that it can return one value so that one value can be one array that one value can be an object which has encapsulated thousands of objects no problem the base that uh, you uh, you you want me to change that code that with array wait this is the code child and I don't need these two uh -huh. Beta thoda sa. I need to do that uh, ARR that is I need to remove that okay uh, I don't need this now and anything else it is 3 by 3 yes it's coming ah what do you want to ask this is how i am returning one single object these are you can see there are two objects but no sorry it is one single object and that single object is a temporary instance in array form and that instance name you don't don't even i know it is randomly created within the memory but i am just using that okay so and here you can see that one single array I am returning so it is not violating the principle of the return statement which is associated with the function and now one single value I am receiving in terms of array and then after that I am extracting that value yes
Yes. That is, that is, that is, that Nile, that is aliasing. I am not storing, we are not storing anything. I am just changing the name of the memory location, I am just trying to access that. What do you think that? Here you are returning that array? No, you are not returning that array. Rather than you are just uh, providing the reference of that memory location. You just see this. This is actually returning the reference address. And this is actually the reference. It, its name can be any. And this procedure is known as aliasing. Aap isko BRR kar dije, no issues. Now here it is BRR. It is BRR. So there is no problem. It will work. Actually, aliasing, this is what aliasing. What is the, what is aliasing? Aliasing is that if same memory location is being, uh, is, has got provided two different names. We all have our nicknames at home. So that is aliasing. So array is what? Uh, every time when you return array, the base address of the array is returned. Array is, array we are not going to return. We are just returning the base address, memory location. And that memory location is the part of the random access memory. So simply it is accessible. No issues, no. I will share definitely, I am sharing. Okay, now children, uh, we are about to end this session. So I hope you have enjoyed this class. So in case any doubt, you are free to ask. Okay, and uh, remember a few points that today you have to submit your assignment before 9 p.m. Thank you. Please leave.